job like this with that hat. What do you want? <laughs> do you see how one bad take of audio can ruin a scene? Well, we are here to teach you how to record effective audio even when you're on your own. Let's get started. So to get started on your solo journey into the audio world, you're gonna need five things. A personal audio recorder, a boom mic, a lav mic, headphones, and a carabiner. So the first thing you wanna do is connect all those devices together. So that's gonna be taking your boom pole and connecting it to the audio recorder through its cable, and then taking your lav mic receiver and connecting that to your cable. Once you've done that, connect your carabiner to the top of your audio recorder, and you can attach that to your belt so you have easy access to it while still holding a boom. Connect your headphones to your audio recorder so you can hear exactly what you're recording. Remember to take constant breaks whenever you have your headphones on because you'll hear very acute, detailed sounds with them on. And when you take them off after a long period of time, things can become... weird. If your actor has a spare moment, try to test some audio levels with them so you can get a read of the room. You want your audio levels to hover around just about negative 8 decibels to get the best sound you can. Now recording audio before the scene actually starts will just give you parameters of what levels you should be at, and also give you a read of your environment. So the only way you'll really know the true levels of a scene is having the actors play out the scene. See if you can get your actors to rehearse the scene a few times so you can get their true levels on how they're going to actually sound on the shoot. When your actors are rehearsing, try to memorize when they're talking loudly and when they're talking softly so you can adjust your levels during the shoot. So once you get comfortable with the levels on your take, it's time to start tailoring your recording to the audio at hand. And how you're going to do that is a thing called running the knobs. So running the knobs is a process of changing your recording levels to tailor to the volume on set. Volume will be constantly changing during your take, so running the knobs gives you the opportunity to bind the seams between the loud and the quiet parts of your take. Now running the knobs effectively takes a little bit of skill, but with enough practice you can get it down pretty easily. After you've seen the take about two or three times, you'll see whenever you need to move up and move down on your knobs to record effective dialogue. So when you're recording on set, you have to remember that there's kind of a mode of operations that goes into every single shot. First, you're going to want to talk to your DP about where your frame line is in that shot. Now a frame line is the very top hair and the bottom hair of your shot and you want to make sure that your boom is just right outside of it so you can record as closely as you can to your actors without being in the shot. After everything's ready to go, the director is going to say quiet on set, which is going to prompt your cameraman to say camera speeding. That's going to prompt you afterwards to say audio speeding. Now this vocal affirmation lets everyone know that you've started recording. It's also a little reminder to yourself to start recording because sometimes you forget. Once you've established both camera and audio recording, then the slate is going to come in to sync both the camera and the audio. You're going to want to get as close as you can to the slate with your boom so you can clearly record the clap that comes from the slate. Whenever the take actually starts, pretend that there's a laser at the end of your boom mic and you want to point it directly at the actor's mouth. This is how you're going to get your clearest audio with a boom mic. Remember, if you're the only one taking care of audio, you're the one that has to remember. You must get room tone. Don't let anyone forget it. Whenever you have a scene change or a setting change, you need to remember to get room tone to get the ambient sounds for that take. Whenever I'm running solo audio, I usually bring a notepad with me to write down which takes are good and which takes are bad. That way you can give that note to your editor so they can comb through the takes a lot easier. Remember, if you're doing this solo, don't be afraid to speak up if you have a bad take on audio. Even if the DP got the perfect shot and the actors killed it, if you don't have good audio, the take's not going to be good once you've put it all together. So. They might hate you, but speak up and say I didn't get a good take and just do it again. It's alright. Everyone does it once in a while. So hopefully this setup works for you and I wish you luck in your future solo endeavors. My name is Robbie Janae with Shutterstock.com and we'll see you next time.